Santo here, good morning from Sydney, Australia. It's a beautiful, warm, sunny spring morning. If you haven't watched the series so far, you better go back. We're looking at end time events, the final crisis, the one world government, the new world order, and Babylon. How is Babylon in the book of Revelation connected to the new world order and the one world government? Go back and watch all the others in the series, or this one is not going to make any sense. In the previous teaching, I demonstrated that Babylon is clothed in the exact same clothes as the high priest in the Old Testament. Yeah? So it was clearly that this Babylon figure in the book of Revelation is posing as an end-time global religious figure that rides and controls the governments of the world and then it tries to kill, through this union, the followers of Jesus. So we know that the beast that it rides are the governments of the world. We've seen that in the last two or three videos. In the last one, we saw that Babylon was distinct from the governments of the world. And in fact, it is a global religious power because it's dressed in the clothes of the high priest. It's a religious power. People are objecting and telling me, they're inboxing me and telling me, Basanto, uh, this would indicate, since it's dressed in the clothes of the highest priest, it could be Judaism. Well, number one, that's not all Revelation says about the identity of Babylon. Not only does it use symbolism of the Old Testament, the high priest, a representative of God, to describe Babylon, it also uses New Testament images that apply strictly to the church and applies that to Babylon. This is a global religious power at the end of time with a strong Christian face. I'm now going to focus in today's teaching and in the next one on all the language and symbols that the New Testament in general and the book of Revelation in particular used to describe the church. These symbols used to describe Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the church are applied to Babylon as well. It has a very strong Christian presence and face. Okay, so... I want to show you two conflicting, contrasting passages. Contrasting in the sense of John's reaction to certain actions. In chapter 13, John sees the beast, this one world antichrist power, political power, persecute the people of God, and he doesn't react. Revelation 13, 7. The beast was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. Puts it down, stating the fact the beast, this antichrist, one world government power, at the end is going to conquer the people of God, the followers of Jesus. No reaction. But when John sees Babylon do this exact same thing, he freaks out. Revelation 17, 6. I saw the woman Babylon was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. And when I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Why wasn't he astonished when he saw the beast kill the people of God? But when he saw the woman Babylon do it, he was shocked. I was shocked when I saw her doing it. Do you want to know why? He already saw this woman in chapter 12. And it was a description for the people of God, the followers of Jesus. It ends up falling away and ends up persecuting the true followers of Jesus within her Babylon is fallen religion at the end of time globally with a very strong Christian face. Let's have a look at the Christian images in the book of Revelation and the Gospels and how they're applied to Babylon. Okay, this is going to be upsetting to many, but let's get into it. The book of Revelation uses a number of symbols. The lamp, the bride, the bridegroom. All these three symbols are, are Christian New Covenant symbols. Okay? The lamp, the bride, the bridegroom. Okay? And here's going to be the bottom line, the slam dunker. These three images are used to describe Babylon. Babylon is a religious system at the end of time with a strong Christian base and ends up persecuting the followers of Jesus. Let's have a look at the image of lamp, a lamp. 
Revelation 4, 5. From the throne of God came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne of God, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. A lamp in the book of Revelation is a symbol of the presence of the spirit of God. A lamp in the book of Revelation is a symbol for the presence of the Spirit of God. Okay? But that's not only it. The lamp is also a symbol of something else. Revelation 21, 23. The new Jerusalem does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it its light and the lamb, the lamb, Jesus is its lamp. The lamp is a powerful symbol in the book of Revelation to describe the presence of the Holy Spirit and the presence of Jesus. Very strong images. Let's look at another image, the bride, the bride. Revelation 19.7. What's this image about in the book of Revelation? Revelation 19.7. Let's rejoice and be glad and give God the glory because the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has prepared herself. The bride of Christ in the book of Revelation is are the followers of Jesus. You go to Matthew 25. It's very clear there that the bridegroom is Jesus and the bride are the followers of Jesus. And we're going to look at Matthew 25 in a moment. So the lamp represents the presence of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The lamp is also a symbol for the presence of Jesus giving light. The bride is a symbol for the followers of Jesus. Christian, 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 new covenant language, yes. And then we've got another one. The bridegroom, the bridegroom, Matthew nine fifteen. There are four or five I could give you. There's two or three references in Matthew 25 to the bride and the bridegroom, identifying the bride as the followers of Jesus, yeah, who are in relationship with Jesus and the bridegroom being Jesus. But I'm going to give you a different one. Okay, Matthew nine fifteen. What does a bridegroom represent in the new covenant? Jesus said to them, can wedding guests mourn while the bridegroom is still with them, him. But the time will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast. The bridegroom is a symbol of Jesus. The bride is a symbol of the followers of Jesus. The lamp is a symbol for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the lamp is a symbol for the presence of Jesus, the lamb. Okay, all strong new covenant Images. Now comes the shocker. Why was John astounded when he saw that the woman Babylon was killing the followers of Jesus? But he wasn't when the beast was doing it. Because Babylon, the woman who became a harlot, was originally the people of God, but then had fallen away and then started to persecute the true people of God within her. Okay? Now let me show you how these three symbols, the lamp for the Holy Spirit, the lamp for Jesus, the bridegroom for Jesus, and the bride for the church. New covenant symbols, yeah? For new covenant symbols for the church and Jesus and Holy Spirit. Okay. Let's have a look at Revelation 18.23 and note how these symbols come together with reference to the identity of Babylon. This is why John shocked. He says, oh my goodness, Babylon was a pure woman and now she's become a fallen woman and a persecutor of the true followers of Jesus. That's why he's shocked, he's gutted. Revelation 18, 23. Listen for the symbols of Babylon. Who is Babylon? Revelation 18, 23. And the light of the lamp, Babylon, will never Shine in you again. Stop. Never shine again. That means it once did. 
the light of a lamp will never shine in Babylon again. It did once. The lamp, the presence of Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit will never shine in you again, Babylon. Babylon once had the presence of the Spirit of God and Jesus, and now it's gone. Fallen, fallen is Babylon. It once had Jesus and the Holy Spirit in it. Wow. This religious power, dressed in the high priest's clothes, yeah, had Jesus in it and the Holy Spirit in it. But not only that. And then, gone. It's fallen, see. Not only that. Let's keep reading. Verse 23, And the light of a lamp, the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, will never shine in you again, Babylon. He didn't say they were never there in the first place. He said they'll never shine in you again. Had it, lost it. Lost Jesus and lost the Holy Spirit. The light of a lamp, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, will never shine in you again, Babylon. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall never be heard in you, Babylon, again. Bridegroom, Jesus, and the bride, the followers of Jesus, was in Babylon. Jesus was in Babylon. The lamp. The Holy Spirit was in Babylon. The lamp. The bridegroom was once in Babylon. Jesus. And the bride was once in Babylon. The followers of Jesus. The woman, Babylon, the true followers of Jesus, and I'm going to get into this next week. The woman was a pure woman in Revelation 12, the followers of Jesus. And she's fallen. And now she becomes a persecutor. And John said, what has happened to the followers of Jesus? Next week, we'll deal with that. This is why we read in 18.2 the following statement. With a mighty voice, the angel, sh the angel shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. If I say to you, the tree has fallen, that means it was previously upright. Babylon was once upright. And now has fallen. She's gone from being a pure woman to a harlot woman. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become the dwelling place for demons. So originally she was not a dwelling place for demons. It's something that she has become because she has fallen, because she was a pure woman, and now she's become an adulterated woman. She has become a dwelling place for demons. She once was, but she's become that. She was once the dwelling place for the Spirit of God. Now she has become the dwelling place of the demons. Can you see why John is gutted? totally gutted and then she kills the true followers of Jesus who were still in her and that's why we read in 18.4 this statement, are you ready? I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of Babylon my people what the heck are God's followers the followers of Jesus, the people of God doing in Babylon. Because Babylon, prior to its falling, prior to becoming uh, inhabited by demons, was the woman pure and she's become a harlot. It's now become adulterated, prostituted, the movement of the people of God, but there are still true ones in there. And Jesus calls them out, come out. Because she's about to kill you. Babylon 
is an end time global religious power dressed in the clothes of the high priest, the representative of God, with a strong Christian face. Babylon, this figure that was once the movement of God, will one day control the governments. We're not seeing this yet, but I smell it. Global religion with a strong Christian face is going to one day control the governments of the world. It'll have an agenda called the Great Reset, which I'm going to get into. It's there. I didn't read you all in verse 23, but it's there. Religion with a Christian faith globally is going to control all the governments of the world with an agenda and then persecute the true followers of Jesus. Babylon was once upright. It was fallen. It was a pure woman. It became a prostitute woman. It had the lamb in it. It's gone. It had the lamp in it. It's gone. It had the bridegroom in it. It's gone. And it had the bride in it, the church. And it's gone. And it's fallen. And God says to those who are true within Babylon, that was once the pure woman, now the adulterated woman, you guys who are faithful and true, it's now time. It's time to go. My people have fallen. Why did she fall? Is the fall of Babylon and how it happened described in the book of Revelation? Yes, it is. It's in chapter 12 and chapter 13. We're going to get back to that next week. God bless you.